Hi my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today this is going to be a tiny bit of a long one um, but bear with me, I'm going to talk to you about um, modifying two strokes to work in the modern world so let's just imagine, I'm going to tell you this little story so we're going to relax a bit, I'm going to relax a bit more likely it's fucking hot I don't want to get all arsy about people's dumb comments and so on. So, let's just imagine we have Dave. So this is the story of Dave and Jeff. So, Dave's our manager, Dave's our boss, and Jeff is our design engineer and all the rest of it. Now let's just imagine in this fictitious story or this fictitious world or whatever, that a two-stroke is the only engine. So, our two-stroke crankcase breathing, fucking hell, four people start with the fucking bullshit. Oh, marine diesels. Who gives a shit about marine diesels? Really? There we go. Exhaust up there. Right, so we're going to basically talk about the conversation between Jeff and his boss Dave. So, we've got this new engine and everything is fantastic, right? It's absolutely fucking brilliant. What happens is, is the piston comes down, compresses, moves, blah, 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 blah. He goes, but we've got a problem. And he goes, what's that? He says, well, the problem is, is that the volumetric efficiency, how much of this we actually keep in here, is shocking, it's shit. It just pisses out the exhaust half the time. And he's like, alright then, so what can we do about it? Well, he goes, I've been thinking about some ideas. He goes, what we can do is we can kind of use um, back pressure to, you know, we can use this pressure wave inside an exhaust. He goes, well, how are we going to do that? Well, he goes, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to basically put a wall in front of the air but we can't make that wall unless we expand it out first so it goes basically this pressure wave comes down here Dave it expands out, it slows down then it hits this wall and it rebounds, it rebounds and it comes back together in a sense and it comes back and if we time it right it will push all this exhaust uh, the exhaust gases, or the pressure wave, sorry, of the exhaust, of everything flinging out, will, you know, recover some of it. He's like, oh, fucking great. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, and we can use this, we can time the ports correctly, so we can actually use this kind of cross-flowing thing from the transfer port. He goes, so we're bang on our 100% efficiency. All is fucking mustard. You know, two strokes, you don't fucking need any more. It's up, down, up, down. It's all repeat. You know what I mean? It's fucking wonderful. It's lightweight, it's cheap, we're all mustard. So things go on for a couple of months and all the rest of it. And then Dave comes in and says, Jeff, mate, he says, I've got a fucking disastrous story for you. He's like, what? He goes, we can't keep on making these engines. He's like, what are you fucking talking about? He goes, there's been some fucking pillar biting lesbian fucking screaming her tits off, saying we've just killed her rabbit with the shit that comes out of this exhaust. And he's like, oh, well, fuck her. Why does that matter? He goes, well, because all the other bastards are now complaining. There's been a court case, we're going to be fucked in the arse if we don't change what we do. And he's like, well, what's the problem? He says, it's the fucking oil and the fuel. He it says, it's going, it, it's basically, it's been burned in your fucking lovely engine and it's pissing outside there. It's eventually making its way out and it's killing all the daisies and what have you. So he says, you're going to have to come out with some concepts of how to fucking sort this out. It's like, oh, but it's beautiful, you know, it's beautiful, it's simple, it's powerful, it's whatever. So, Jeff goes off and he works on it for a couple of months, and then he comes back with a presentation ready for Dave. You've got to remember, Dave's his manager, and Dave gives him the final nod. Now, Dave's got certain pressures, which are um, cost. Cost being the main one. Number two is it has to, you know, shut these fucking screaming pillar biters up about their fucking pet rabbit gizmos fucking heads exploded because of diesel fumes petrol fumes and two-stroke oil 
So Dave's got, you know, Dave is under pressure here to sort this shit out. And Jeff brings him a presentation saying, well, this is what I've been doing over the last couple of months. You know, give me the nod or not. So then Jeff says to Dave, he says, well, what have you come up with? He says, oh, it's awesome. He goes, I've got loads of ideas. He goes, you know, some, I just wanted to pass you by and you're the consultant engineer. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. He goes, well, what's the first thing you want to do? He goes, well, I thought about using some eco-friendly oil. He goes, how does that work? He goes, well, it's hydrocarbons and they're not as bad. And they've got all these additives in and all the rest of it. He goes, but it burns and it's not as much nasty nasties and all the rest of it. He goes, right, what's it do for our customers with in relation to power and all the rest of it? Oh, you have to rev the engine, fucking only two thirds because it's got no stiction. The thing's like fucking treacle, it's crap. He goes, well, that ain't fucking good, is it? He goes, no. So he goes, well, scrap that idea because that doesn't sound good. You know, it's not, that's really not a solution. People still need the engines to produce pretty much the power that they have. They won't accept a 25% power reduction. He goes, right, what else have you got? He's like, well, what we can do is, is we can use minimal oil, and we can oil these bearings here, we can have spray oil in here, here, and we can maybe spray a bit on the cylinders. We can greatly reduce the amount of oil we can use. He goes, by how much? He goes, about 70% the maximum, that's what we can get away with. He goes, but, he goes, the downside with that is, is obviously we're burning it still. He goes, yeah, that'll do for now, but... We want to try and come up with a solution to just stop this burning altogether. And he's like, right, all right then. So, you know, we're future proofing here. He goes, if you can come out with one of your solutions, call it, sorts the whole thing out and fucking do it. So he goes, right, all right, well, not that then. He goes, have you got any other ideas? He goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, what we can do is we can get rid of this crankcase breathing malarkey altogether. He's like, right, so what we're going to do about that? He goes, well, what we're going to do is. We're going to have a twin. We're going to have a, a twin lobe supercharger. It goes, yeah. Let's, uh, let's fucking do this. It goes. We're going to have a twin lobe supercharger like this. That's really badly drawn. There. It goes. We'll have a roots blower supercharger, and then he goes. We'll have that pumping, like so. He's like, well, how does that help? He goes, well, because we're not using the crankcase, so then we can just have a four-stroke system, not a four-stroke system, <laughs> four strokes don't exist yet. He goes, so then we can have a, a, you know, a basically a crankcase oiling system that's completely sold, uh, you know, away from the shit. He's like, oh, fucking fantastic. He goes, you sort the oilation out. He goes, yeah, we don't really have to oil it whatsoever. He goes, but what's the, you know, he goes, ah, but hang about. He goes, we're still going to piss out of the exhaust and they're going to start whinging about the fuel and all the rest of it. He goes, yeah, yeah, but he goes, no, this is a lot better. He goes, how much the superchargers cost? He's like, about 50% of the entire engine cost plus. He's like, fuck off. <laughs> no, no, you're all right. He goes, any other issues? You know, I've got to sell this to the board or whatever, but any other issues? He goes, yeah, yeah, you've got to fucking drive it off the engine and fucking rob it of 20% of its power. Uh, 20%, not 20 HP. 20% of its power. He's like, so hang about, it's going to cost fucking 50% more and we're going to rob 20% power just for some fucking oil. He goes, no, 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 Jeff, mate. You're going to have to try harder than that. He goes, all right, all right, all right. He says, I've got you here, I've got you. He says, right, what we can do is he goes, to solve that problem altogether, he goes, we can have an exhaust port like this. We can get rid of this shitty exhaust, so we're saving money because we're getting rid of that shitty exhaust. He goes, yeah, he goes, we'll have a fucking valve in here. We can do it a rotational valve, we can use a pop-it valve or what have you, and then we'll have our ports. And he goes, well, what are you going to do about your porting? He goes, I still don't fucking know. He says, I'm still stuck on the supercharging idea. He goes, well, that's 50% increase in cost. So he goes, that ain't going to fucking work. He says, oh, yeah, also, the supercharger's still robbing energy out of it. And now we need a camshaft with a fucking bloody cam on it to open this valve, you know, backwards and forwards and so on and so forth. He goes, well, that ain't going to fucking work. 
He goes, oh, there is a bonus, though. He goes, if you increase this to the size of, I don't know, fucking 10 litres and above, he goes, it actually starts to pull back some of its, you know, it, 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 you can get benefits from it. The other thing is we can do multi-cylinder. He goes, yeah, but fucking hell, we're in the market of making single-cylinder fucking engines for the motorbiking community and all the rest of it. You know what I mean? This ain't gonna fucking run, is it? He goes, it's robbing 20% power. This is gonna rob about 2, 3, 4, 5% power. He's having this valve. He goes, and the fucking cost is through the roof. What the fuck are we doing? He's like, I don't know. It's a like, you keep on, you know, it's... He it says it'd be so... It's pissing me off, he said, because... What happens if we try and, you know, what happens if we try and flip the valves, Jeff? What happens if we, you know, if we have a valve on the bottom and a valve on the top? He goes, but still, he goes, you're not going to be able to pull in anything. He goes, well, what happens if we just put valves like this? What happens if we just forget fucking going through the cylinder altogether? What happens if we just have valves like this? He goes, well, how's that going to work? He goes, well, when you come down, it's going to it's gonna draw a vacuum. He goes, but that's your power stroke, you dumbass. The pressure in here is seriously high. If you open this inlet valve, all that's going to happen is your fucking exhaust gases and your combustion are going to go out through your intake. He goes, and then there'll be no point in having an exhaust. He goes, what happens if you went all the way down to the bottom and you had another valve that we're now going to call our intake that opens? He says, you've still got a fucking cylinder full of fucking hot gases. It hasn't gone anywhere. He goes, well, you've just opened this valve. He goes, but we don't want to open that on the fucking stroke on the way down. Because we can't mix up all these things. He says, you're trying to do too many things at once, Dave. He goes, well, go, go away and fucking have a think about it. So Jeff goes away and has a think about it. And he goes, the fucking problem is here is we're going down with the piston. Which means we're pushing, we're expanding. But we want to put stuff in. So we expand all the way to the bottom. We push all the way to the bottom. And then we want to get stuff in. But we need to get the stuff out. We need to get stuff out and replace it with stuff in as it's travelling to the top and increasing the pressure because it's doing compression. How the fuck are we going to do that? It goes, because at the moment the system we have is we have two cylinders in a sense. We have this section and this section. We have section A cylinder and section B cylinder. And what happens in section A is we do our in swapping with our out. At our top we do our compression and we do our power. That's the problem we're facing. It goes, you know, we're trying to do A at the bottom and we're trying to do B. It goes, but the problem is, is this imaginary line? Because we have no way of doing this. What would be great is if we could separate this with a pair of scissors. We could have a valve that literally separates the two. Let's have two cylinders. That's the fucking way. Right, let's have two cylinders. Why don't we do that? 